Google has surprised everyone by dropping Android 13 QPR 1 Beta 1 earlier than it was expected. So here's all of the top new features that you need to know. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So a quick PSA or forewarning first and foremost, and a little bit of information thrown in before we really dive in. QPR stands for Quarterly Platform Release, and it's effectively a sneak peek at the December update, which will likely be the basis for an upcoming Pixel feature drop, which we will cover when it's available. There should be three betas, all in all, with the stable release of this actual piece of software in December. It's also worth noting that if you are still enrolled in the Android 13 beta, you will actually get notification or you may have received one already to download a pretty sizable two gigabyte or so OTA file. If you want to leave, just head over to the dedicated beta enrollment page and opt out and you should be removed. This won't remove anything from your device so long as you do this before you download and install on your phone. So it's worth doing that now. Avoid using that OTA file, go over to the website, make sure you opt out and then it's done and dusted. You can sideload this at any point as you want to. And to be fair to Google, they have stated that it's actually suitable for daily use for what it's worth. Anyway, though, let's get on with the new additions, which are mostly quality of life options with a few reorganization bits thrown in there. Top of that, let's get into it. The ability to search your device from the Pixel Launcher home screen was supposed to come with the stable Android 13 release. Sadly, though, it didn't quite work out like that. Although being able to search via the slide up app drawer remains fine and has existed since Android 12, you'd be pleased to hear that the function has or as seen in the Android 13 beta phase has been somewhat restored here in QPR 1 beta 1. The search field at the top of your app grid is identical to the one at the bottom of the Pixel Launcher. From here, you can quick launch Google Lens or the Assistant, while a visually similar experience for searching device or your device and web content returns for the first time since that previous beta phase. The results, as you can see, are, they'll differ depending on just where a lookup has been initiated from. Searching from the top of the app grid consistently limits web results to just four lines, while you get a from this device section that shows things like app shortcuts, as well as results from the settings application and the Pixel Tips app as well. That section does not appear when you search from the home screen though, which just surfaces up to five app results in a row and then web content underneath. It's not the perfect solution, but we're expecting this to change and evolve as these betas progress. Bundled with Android 13 QPR 1 beta 1 is Pixel Recorder version 3.7. This would usually roll out via the Google Play Store, but instead comes preloaded here, which means it is part and parcel of it. Most notably, Pixel Recorder 3.7 now fully supports the Android 13 media player. It's cosmetic or it's a cosmetic change to say the least, but you'll now get a squared off play and pause button, plus the progress or playback progress bar now has a skip forward and backward toggles either side of that squiggle scrubber. The app itself has a few tweaks as well. Inside, when tapping a recording's three button overflow menu, you'll immediately see a create video clip and export transcript to Google Doc option here. Previously, these were only really accessible by entering the share sheet, and this makes it much easier to access and aids visibility and prominence. There are also some very minor tweaks to Pixel Recorder 3.7 that include tweaking to the buttons and all pop-up dialogues, they're almost all more centered for a little bit of a negligible reachability gain, but it is minor, all things considered. Google has also added a delightful touch to the quick settings panel. We think this is one of our favorites in this new update. So basically when you select options or activate them, you'll now see mini animations on each button glyph or the icon itself. Certain tiles though, they'll show no animation such as the Wi-Fi toggle, which will open a larger panel for you to interact with your Wi-Fi networks. But most will have mini animations to indicate that they have been activated or deactivated depending on which one you choose. One of our favorites is the battery saver mode toggle which shows that plus icon filling up or activating around that battery glyph. It is a nice touch, but it's worth noting that not all toggles will have that dedicated animation as we mentioned. The flashlight or torch is a prominent example as is the one-handed mode and nightlight, but we're hoping that these will arrive as these beta updates progress. Also, it's worth noting that when activating the focus mode, the digital wellbeing option that minimizes or closes distracting apps and doesn't let you access them, this will show a persistent pane at the bottom of the quick settings panel when active. Deactivating that, you can swipe that away as you would normally here too. 
A long press of the power button in Android 13 might not open the power menu as you expected if you're following default settings. And if you haven't deactivated the mode, this will bring up the Google Assistant. You can actually change this by heading into the settings menu and finding the press and hold power button section. And this has been slightly updated here in Android 13 QPR1 Beta 1 with a more explicit toggle that only shows the sensitivity options when the digital assistant radio button has been highlighted. This certainly simplifies proceedings and ensures no confusion when the mode is inactive. A new silence notifications while driving toggle has appeared or is now within the safety and emergency section. And this is simply a toggle to enable or activate do not disturb mode when your phone detects your, that you're driving, but it's in a more sensible and prominent location where you can activate all of your safety settings, such as car crash detection mode and everything related to driving safety on your smartphone. We're also pretty sure that most people out there now will use a screen protector. I know myself, I use screen protectors with most of my devices. To save some confusion, the increase touch sensitivity option that was added to help improve touch response with screen protectors has simply and sensibly been renamed now to screen protector mode within display settings. It doesn't change the functionality of it. It's just a brand new name and it's a sensible one at that. Another minor but welcome change, to, or at least for accessibility, is found within the screen saver section. The when to start option has now been elevated above the customization options for easier prominence and you can adjust that when you need to. There's also a much more explicit cover image indicating just that, or just what you can adjust within that colors tab. The minor tweaks, but all of these are lovely little quality of life additions that start to add up as Google makes the tuning. Normally as well, it's worth noting beta updates for Android can be a little behind stable builds in terms of software security. Android 13 QPR1 beta 1 though actually features the October 2022 security patch almost a month ahead of the stable channel. That's a great, that, or that is great to hear probably if you want to run this on your default device as your patch now, at least up until early November and will be ahead of most devices on the market, including the Pixel series and even Samsung's recent excellent efforts at keeping their own devices updated. So this latest beta adds a really small number of additions for the software side of things, but the, it also includes a number of key fixes and problems predominantly facing Pixel 6 owners specifically. If you happen to have a Pixel 6a, some of the fingerprint unlock setup process problems have now been resolved. If you do have a 5G capable device, which is barely limited, a fix has come for the system wrongly showing 5G in the status bar rather than 5G UW, what come back when connected to ultra wideband networks. A major problem fixed here also now prevents random emergency contact dialing from the lock screen while your Pixel is in your pocket. So though, while they're not major, major problems for facing every single person out there, they're definitely welcome fixes all the same. We've also found a number of features that we really wanted to share with you that can be enabled or if it with a little bit of digging can be found in Android 13 QPR 1 beta 1 that we felt would be unfair not to discuss. So we've going to share these with you. We've unearthed a little bit more information about some upcoming functions and even a few devices that definitely need to be mentioned. Without delving too deeply though into the workings of face unlock for the Pixel 6 Pro and how that will work, we have a dedicated video for that. Go check that out in the description below. We found some extra evidence that is that it is still very much in the works. We even have a better idea of how this will work courtesy of some code strings and an animated GIF that you can see on screen showing the enrollment process. When this is set up, you'll be asked to hold your phone at eye level to start that scanning process, as seen in the GIF that is now on screen. We're now, we've not found any indication of code strings on the Pixel 6 or 6a for that matter, so this looks like it is very much going to be only for the Pixel 6 Pro, as we originally reported when we heard this feature was in the works. Another secret uh, uncovered that we've uncovered involves the upcoming Pixel tablet, which is set to arrive in 2023. We've found a couple of animations within Android 13 QPR 1 Beta 1 showing the docking process for when you need to charge the tablet. Google has also offered a few extra details on just what to expect when your tablet is docked in terms of features and functions. Expect Nest, Star Nest Hub style functionality with the ability to cast music and videos from your phone or other devices directly to the Pixel tablet or without ever needing to unlock the thing. That's basically a summation of the things and we will have a deeper dive on the web on over on 95google.com so go check that out again via the description below. But overall, it's very much everything we've found thus far. It's not a huge update, but there are a few things that you can manually enable 
We maybe will talk about those a little bit later on when they're likely to arrive in, a rem in those remaining couple of beta releases. Let us know though what you think of Android 13 QPR1 Beta 1 down in the comment sections below. I want to know if you're going to run this on your own device. I'm not sure. I might stick to the stable channel this time around. And um, because we're nice like that, you can also grab a celebratory wallpaper that you've seen throughout this video to mark the start of another beta series via the link in the pinned comment or again, the link in the description. I want to say though, thanks for watching. This is Damien with 95Google and I will speak to you later.